so it's already 10 after, man. It doesn't look like uh, anyone with, uh, I don't even want to say an opposing view, but a different, a different perspective, I'm going to say, is uh, <laughs> going to join, which is what I was hoping for, because I think yeah. both sides could, could learn something. But I, in my opinion, and I'll just kind of say my quick piece, and then y'all can chime in what you think. I don't think they're listening to what we're saying. So in there, I'm going to speak for them because they're not here. So what I see online is people posting that, well, this isn't tactical or in a self-defense situation, you would never do A, B, or C. Insert whatever sentence you want, right? But I don't think anyone that really shoots competition is saying that it's tactical or that this is what you would do in a real life situation. We're saying is that the skills you learn <coughs> in competition shooting can be applied in a tactical environment because it's just the shooting component. No tactics, just the shooting, right? Yeah. Just like learning how to drive a Formula One race car, could those kind of driving skills could be used on your way to work, right? It's not saying Formula One is driving to work. It's just saying the skills learned how to control the car could be used in a regular everyday whatever. You just use that skill to apply it to something else. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll let y'all go ahead and rock out with what y'all yeah. think. So, where the disconnect is coming and where where this I, is coming from. I think, and here's my thing. I was thinking about this all week, and I, I was I was hoping that they would show up too, because I think well, there's a few things here. One, a lot of people misunderstand or misinterpret what like tactical shooting is versus like what it really is is self-defense shooting. Self-defense shooting and tactical shooting are two different things. Tactical shooting to me, from my background, which is a military background, is things like reacting to near ambushes, reacting to indirect fire, reacting to a force of 150 people, doing L-shaped ambushes of your own, things like that. Whereas self-defense shooting are, you know, robbery, um, active shooter, um, home invasion. Those are the type of things that you deal with when you're talking about self-defense and those skills ironically are the ones that you're actually practicing when you shoot competitive <laughs> quick draw having engaged targets quickly yes you know where they are but you're going to have to engage and have accurate fire in short spans which is what most of your self-defense situations are going to be you're not kicking off a v-bed initiated ambush when someone comes breaking into your house, that's a completely different set of skills. And the skills you use to clear rooms, you're never going to use in a self-defense situation. Well, I'm not going to say never. It is highly unlikely you will ever be in a gunfight where you have to reload. It's, it's in a self-defense situation. Highly unlikely. Highly, if, if it is, I don't know. I don't know what kind of situation you got yourself into, but... It's probably not going to happen. It, it, real quick engagement <laughs> versus what you're looking at from a military background where – and it, and it was it, – the, the brother that was, that was talking about he was joining all that, what's, what's funny about his argument that all the tactics and stuff he's trained about, room cleaning and stuff like this, apply more to real life, when you go to clear a room as a team in the military, the number one thing about – Clearing a room is to get as many guns into that room as you can in the shortest amount of time. So you actually are rushing into rooms. Like it, it, it was always said, it sucks to be the point man because you're just running into a room blind. You have your, you know, you're, I'm going this direction. The next guy goes a different direction, but you are, you're rushing into a room and acquiring targets as quickly as you can. That's why for me, competition actually does help with those skills because target acquisition and putting a round on target as fast as you can is the pinnacle of any type of shooting. And those skills are really honed in competition. Like nothing else really drives home that skill set in competition to me. Uh, you know, I don't know, you know what else you guys have to say, but. I want to I wanna ask, brother, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know your name, but I want to ask a question. What's up? Uh, the guy, one of the brothers the other day was asking a question in, the, in that chat about Instructor Zero. Yeah, yeah. Um, and what you said, I, it makes total sense to me. <clears throat> but I guess that was what he wanted to be, that would, he wanted that to be his default. But I'm like, even Instructor Zero, 
is practicing some of the things that are commonplace in competition as far as dry fire drills. He didn't get that quick because of military training. He probably got tactics, but the ability to shoot as fast and as accurate as he got, that was him working on his own. That was a commitment to himself Mm -hmm. to be a faster, more accurate shooter. I want to hear, since you have a military background, what is your take on that? Do you agree, disagree? Yeah, no, for sure. As far as speed, like, so, well, here's, here's the other the other point that I wanted to make. Um, like, when it comes to, like, military tactics, 90% of it is putting yourself in a position to be able to effectively engage a target and make it hard for them to engage you, right? So the act of actually breaking off shots is, it's the same. It's the same in competition shooting. It's the same in defensive shooting. It's the same in... Uh, tactical shooting but in in the military we train like like i said that's why most of the time when we do mount training when we do um drills and battle drills you don't fire around because most of it is putting yourself in a position to be able to engage your target and make it hard for them to engage you back effectively so you know what what zero was doing most of his like your, your trigger manipulation your, your target acquisition when firing live rounds yeah that's just reps on your own and and, and to me competition okay i mean that's that's kind of what i thought let me ask another other question to my knowledge with all the folks that i've spoke to in the military is there's no standard or no requirement for you to do dry fire is there or, no. or maybe you okay that's what i thought no. the military teaches you how to put rounds in a, in a direction maybe from different positions if you get into like advanced marksmanship training and stuff like that and room clearing but like as far as fundamentals of shooting fast there is there's almost no training that's why these that's why these tier one groups start bringing in competition shooters to teach them how to shoot faster the guys like like uh bakken's the t-rex arms guy you know like a lot of these guys bring in competition shooters when they're doing their workups I've, i've known sf dudes and they absolutely bring in competition shooters to teach them how to shoot faster because most of what you do in the military is maneuvering <laughs> and then using overwhelming fire to defeat your enemy, either by suppression and calling the air strike or just shooting the shit out of the dude because you got 10 guns in the room. So. Hey, what's going on, Richard? How you doing, brother? What's going on, man? How you doing? Doing good, doing good. Apologize for being late. It's all good, it's all good. So <clears throat> I'll just say, like, today, uh, I was telling Will I was shooting at Quantico, and I actually brought it up to them, right? You know, you have at Quantico, you have uh, Secret Service. They had a Secret Service team there yesterday. Today, they had the Marine Corps, a whole battalion of trainers. It's like the Marine Corps trainer battalion so they're all the, the instructors for the marine corps they you know they, they they have the marine competition shooting team that was there so two two of the members there so i asked them i was like listen you know there's this big thing online that you know um between you know um the tactical shooters quote unquote versus uh competition and you know they all just rolled their eyes as in you know it's it's not it. There is no there is no versus. versus, right? there is no versus. It, there, it it isn't a versus thing. Generally, it's from the retired old old way of thinking. Um, in that they you know one of the things is like thank God that you know it's starting to now take a hold because you know it's just the older way of thinking that guys that's never done it, guys that you know they're just retired and now they're looking at competition, um, but have never done it. And they're saying these things, but there, there's no, you know, when you look at those guys, they're, they're doing it to get better at shooting fast and accurate to add on to all the other shit that they know. Right? Um, you know, so it's not something where we've got to, for me, it's hard to just to, you know, we're already trying to make, you know, us better at shooting. And then you just have, groups of people that are are saying that this competition shooting thing is going to get you killed in the streets and it's it's just it's just sad because we have a you know we're all trying to push to get better at something um and then you know we're we're being led astray 
by thinking there's the versus thing when it's a combination of things. You need, like, you can you can learn all the tactics you want, but when you walk in that room, it's about how fast you can acquire a target, how accurately you can put rounds down, and that's it. And if you if you somehow like, it's not like you walk into the room and just stop. Your training doesn't stop. You've got to learn how to be fast and accurate and be able to drop that target. So I don't I don't understand why there's a versus thing. The military, current, active, special forces, all those guys, all the CIA, all those guys are there, not because they think that for some reason that if they learn competition, that somehow it's gonna make them less deadlier. They're gonna they're gonna actually jump out and, and unlearn everything they've learned. There's a think tank that went out and said, Marines, Navy, Air Force, I want you guys to go learn this and apply it to your tactics, right? A whole a whole group of them, you know, that's what the military's doing right now. And so um, it's just, it's, it's just sad that, that we're not, you know, you just have a groups of people out there thinking that somehow, um, it's not, it's, it's, I don't know. It's not, it's not a good thing. So <clears throat> that was it. Uh, look, we had some more people that joined. Yeah, I, 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 I joined it all. Just listen to everybody talking. Uh, you know, I like to listen to people before I uh, make any comments. Uh, yeah. all you all you guys have good points but uh, I don't know how many any, any of you have actually been in gunfights and I'm not talking about military action that's that's not a gunfight that you may consider it a gunfight but I'm just gonna tell you I've, I've, I've been in more than one gunfight and I can tell you right now as, as a police officer and when I wasn't a police officer and I can tell you right now competition training is important so is tactical training but one thing you have to the military, the police, all those organizations teach you the same thing. If you learn this, learn this, it's gonna be better your chance. And, and, they're, and they're right, it will better your chances. But, but the reason they teach you that, because the reality is, if they told you the truth, most of you probably wouldn't want to carry a gun. You're not in control in a gunfight. I don't care how much you think you are. I don't care whether you're a competition shooter, tactical shooter, I don't care how much military experience you got or whatnot. You're not in control. And I'm gonna give you some examples. Um, I was... Um, uh, I worked in the district uh, one, one afternoon, a nice day. This is a, 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 a typical afternoon, nothing uh, unusual. And the next district, uh, and it was around shift change. And um, the other, the district, actually, I was, it was right on the border where this call came out. And it was, uh, uh, they said, uh, uh, a man beaten on a fence with a stick. So who thinks uh, anything uh, unusual about that? You know, big deal. I mean, the other district, there was in roll call changing. And uh, our district was getting ready to go in about time for our shift change. And I was the only one there. So I, I even though it wasn't in our district, I said, well, I'll go handle it. No big deal. Just go handle it. Probably some crazy guy, some, you know, maybe some street guy. You just go talk to him. No big deal. So I go, and the guy has like a big wooden chain baton. He's beating on a chain link fence. The guy's um, about 6'3", well built. And I later found out he was, um, he was like a police wannabe in this other district, uh, martial artist and all that stuff. But something in his mind has snapped. I don't know. You don't, you don't know these things when you come up. This, this is the point I'm trying to tell you. With all that training, it goes out the window. So I, I walk, you know, I, I'm not going to walk up on the guy, but I, I see, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the situation is. I don't know who else is around. I just tell the guy, I say, well, you know, what, what's going on? So the guy starts to rush at me with the stick. So I sidestep. I don't draw on him. I mean, the guy's only got a stick. I ain't going to shoot the guy that just got a stick. But I snapped my holster. I said, drop the stick. He drops it. He complies. Before, before the stick hits the ground, he draws a nine millimeter and points it at my head. And he's like a, 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 a less than a foot away from my head. Now, who, who thought that? Now, if, I, I would challenge anybody say they thought the man would have a gun. I would say you're lying because I didn't think he'd have a gun. I had no reason. Nobody said he had a gun. And the guy wasn't acting, you know, aggressive or nothing like that. But this is to show you in a gunfight, you don't know what's going to happen. You, you, we, most people think like Hollywood, a gunfight, okay, you get a call for a robbing a bank, armed robber, whatnot. So you go there and you're looking for a gun and all this stuff. That's TV stuff. That's not the way it go down in real life. Anyway, so this guy's got a, a nine mil, loaded nine millimeter, a less than a, a foot from my head. So I'm looking at the guy that he's just, he's not saying, he's just talking out of his mind, you know, at minus now. I'm, I'm trying to assess the situation. So first thing I figured, well, I, I know I'm already dead. My gun is my holster, it's not out. 
You know, he got his gun to my head. I know I'm going to die, but I don't want to die. I don't want them to write in my epitaph that he got shot with his gun in the holster. Now, they always teach it, taught us that somebody got a gun on you, don't draw. I said, fuck that. They're not going to write that I died with my gun in my holster. So I sidestepped, screwed my head, and I pulled my gun out. And I got my gun to his head. I told him to drop his weapon, you know. But the, but the man, he turned around, he said, you drop your weapon. Now, he's a crazy man, you know, but his mind is like that of a child. Now, this is what I'm talking about is a gunfight. Not some place where you aim at somebody and you got concealment and cover. Yeah, we all know about that. I've been in the military and I've been police and I'm going get ready to go back into the police department also now. But um, but we all know about concealment and cover and all that stuff. All right. But the thing is, it's one thing to shoot a man. It's another thing to look in a man's eyes, he lets him foot from you and execute him. Now I had the legal authority and it wasn't an issue. I was I know I wasn't going to jail, I wasn't worried about that, but the man was like a child. How many people can look in the eyes of a child and blow their brains out? So, I mean, I didn't take the job. I mean, I know I might have to kill somebody, but I didn't want to kill somebody. The man had no chance against me. When I sidestepped and drew my weapon, I knew he had no chance. I could have killed him right then. But I'm trying to de-escalate the thing. So anyway, the, the point, the, to show you how all this pressure goes on, so we both got our guns out. We're less than a foot from each other. Our guns are already aimed at each other's head. So when, when something like that happens, <clears throat> Now they say it by that time because the people, now you don't hear nothing, only thing I'm focused on, I'm focused on that man and that gun. That's all I see in the whole world. I will see nothing else. They said police was all around us and everything. I didn't see nobody. I didn't see no cars, no lights, no nothing. All I saw was him. So then um, I heard an offer, you know, and I'm telling him to drop his weapon. He, he wouldn't drop his weapon. So I said, okay, well, look. I said, look, I'm gonna put my weapon down. You blow yours down. So I'm trying to get him to lower his weapon. He won't lower his weapon. I said, I don't want to kill this man. I'm myself. I'm not, I, I, if, I, if I shoot him, I got to blow his brains out. Because we're too close to, to for me. Because I shoot him, he's going to shoot me. We're probably both going to die. So the only way I can get out of it is blow his brains out. But the man is the man is helpless against me. Because I already, already maneuvered against him. I know he can't defend himself against me. So I heard another officer behind me. And that's why it's good to be close with people. I knew exactly who it was, uh, uh, an Italian uh, officer named Joe Scavone. And he said, drop the weapon. And I knew from his voice right where he was, he was right to my back. I sidestepped to my left and he fired and struck the guy twice. And fortunately it saved and, and, and the guy sh shot off a reflex and just missed my head whatnot. But that's what I'm telling you, the gunfight. People think a gunfight, oh yeah, you know you're going, you don't know nothing. You don't know how it's gonna go. That's the reality of it. All that training, I don't care with FBI, CIA and all that kind of stuff. If they knew, look, Chris Kyle <clears throat> was one of the most celebrated and, and well-respected Navy SEAL snipers uh, ever known in the history of, of shooters. It doesn't get any better than that. He got killed in a gun range by a guy that he was training. Now, nobody gonna call Chris Kyle a pansy and say that he didn't know his, 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 know his craft, but that's I'm, I'm trying to tell you, if that stuff developed, you have no idea how it's gonna happen when it happens. So all I'm trying to say, and all that stuff, I was training, I, I, I mean, it's been years, since I shot a uh, M16, I, I, I was back in the military probably before a lot of you guys were born. But it's been years since I shot an M16 or, 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 or a rifle, you know, like I said, was it, since I was in the military. And um, most of my shooting, most recent shooting has been either 380s or nine millimeters, you know? And um, like I said, but the point I'm making to you guys is all that training, all that stuff, it is important because it will hone your skills of putting it around where you need to put it when the time comes. But in terms of what you're gonna do and all that kind of stuff, that's just to make you feel better. Because when the deal goes down, if it really happens and you're in a real gunfight, you don't know how it's gonna come about. Like I said, who knows? I'm thinking if I ever get in a gunfight, it's gonna be somebody called an armed robbery, you know, bank heist or, or this, or, or gun, gunshots on the street, something like that. Who's thinking a man with a stick is going to throw down a stick and draw a weapon? And I'm going to have it to my head. I, I might die that day. That's just one I was in. I was in another one. I'm not going to go into that. We'll get the guy with the AR-15 and I had a nine millimeter. And again, I didn't see that coming. So the point I'm making is there is no better. The tactical training is good for the maneuvering and all that. The target shooting is excellent because it teaches you how to put that round where you want to. But all that stuff, you can practice all that sausage grip and all that stuff all you want to. When I, when I, when I, the gunfight I was in, I didn't have to fire. When I, when I drew, I wasn't holding no outside for these grip. I gripped one hand and, and later the police ballistics said I put five bullets in the same hole. 
But that was being in the heat of the moment. And I would never want to be, and nothing exciting about it, because I almost got my left nut blown off and my, and my brain's blown out. So it ain't nothing exciting about it. You know, and people get excited about guns and all that, but if you've really been in that stuff, I ain't never looking to be in no gunfight again. I, if I had my choice, I wouldn't have been in those two I was in. But the point I'm making is it ain't nothing better. Tactical shooting is not better. It's good for what it's good for. Competition shooting is not better. It's good for what it's good for. All of them hone the skills you need. But when the time comes, I don't know who said it. Somebody said the correct thing. It comes down to just like when you zero a weapon, you put that, that weapon to find out where it's pulling or wherever else to find it. Well, it's the same thing. You want to be a better shooter? You got to zero yourself. You got to find out your weaknesses and you got to strengthen them and work on that. And But the bottom line will come down to that situation. Unless you've been there, you don't know how you're going to react. So it's, it's basically, it's just reflex. That's what it is. Anybody tell you different, most likely they ain't never been in that situation. Because ain't nobody going in and say, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. Because first of all, they set up the line because you don't know how the deal's going to go down. You don't know. Nobody knows. We like to think we know. Like I said, I planned, if I was ever in a gunfight, it'd be in a bank heist or something else like that. Who, who would ever thought that a man or a beating on a fence with a wooden stick, I'm going to be in a gunfight and something like that. Or, or well, I ain't going to go into the other situation with the guy with the AR-15. But the point I'm making is, a gunfight is not something that you want to get into, but training is good. But in addition to training with the weapon, you need to train yourself, train your emotions, train your self-control, pay attention to your breathing, your heart rate, and all that, and what you're thinking, and how you, your awareness of your environment, and all that. Like I said, when I was in a situation, I didn't see nothing but the target in front of me. I didn't see people, I didn't see nothing. You know, even though there's a whole bunch else going on around me, all I saw was the target. You got tunnel vision, you know, it's like I said, but that's me. But like I said, that's, those are the two situations. Uh, you know, I don't know who else has been in gunfights, but those are two, situ two situations. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to go into the other one for legal reasons. But um, those, are, those are some situations of gunfights, you know, how they actually can develop. Like I said, with Chris Kyle, nobody, it, can nobody claim to be a better shot than that guy. But uh, like I said, he lost his life in a gun range. Like I said, you never know how it's going to develop. So I'm just, you know, that's just a word of caution to everybody. Train, train as much as you can, but you know, be a, be aware that a gun don't make you invincible. No matter how much skill you got, it don't make you invincible. True that's indeed, all I want true to indeed, about. man. We appreciate you, brother. We appreciate you. Um, well, Dr. You. Turner, did you want to add, or are you just on just to listen? No harm in either way. Who's that? You on mute, brother. I muted everybody that didn't mute themselves. You got to unmute. Uh, you're muted, Will. Or am I muted? I can't hear anything. Go ahead and unmute, Richard. If you wanna, if you wanna add. Can anybody hear me? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Yeah, I man. I was saying, you know, just the controversy of it all is just like ridiculous, man. Because it's like, you know, we wanna we wanna compartmentalize what we're doing. And I really think we compartmentalize it because <clears throat> you got people who are a little bit more experienced in what they're doing and people who are kind of intimidated by what's going on, right? But it, the reality of it is in everything that we do with firearms, whether it be simple target shooting at the range, competition shooting, or quote unquote tactical training, they're all skills that, that build upon one another, right? And we are preparing most of us don't even know what we're preparing for, right? If we're preparing for anything. For, for a lot of us, this is something fun to do, right? Um, for some people, you know, if you, like, like the brother said, if you're preparing to defend your life, you don't know what situation you'd be defending your life in, right? I, I got a lot of students that like are preparing for the world to end. The world, if the world's ending, I don't need my gun, man. Like what are we gonna do with it, right? Like the world is gonna end, right? What are we gonna do with it? But they're all skills, I mean, and it builds upon each other. So target shooting, everybody starts out going to the range and just putting putting rounds down range ineffectively or effectively, right? And it just grows from there. Everything that we do grows from there. So tactical shooting, copper shooting, they're all transferable skills, right? It all, it's all interconnected. The question is, are you willing to be vulnerable enough to expose yourself to what you don't know so that you can get better, right? I've never heard a boxer say like, I don't wanna train. 
Like, if you're a real boxer, it don't matter if you go to the gym and you just hit the speed bag or if you go run a mile. You're going to do something to make yourself more efficient. Right? And then we make it all about violence, and it's really not all about violence. It's, it's about just being prepared for whatever. Mentally, physically, it's a skill. No different than Taekwondo or Jiu-Jitsu or anything else like that, right? It's a craft. Right. So if we're involved in this craft and you're involved in it seriously, you don't see the division. Right. Between tactical training, if anything, you see how it all correlates and comes together and makes you more efficient. Right. So, I mean, I, you know, that's my perspective. And it kind of cringes. It makes me cringe because I got so many students that hit me up like I want tactical training. I mean, tactics. Right. Like. <laughs> Like, what, you want to run around the woods and hide behind barrels? Like, there's no stress in that. There's no reality in that. There's You're a poor shot. You're a poor shot when you're running through the woods, right? Like, what is tactical training? Like, you need to get out and just get in it. Like, do what you see everybody else doing and stop sitting on the sideline because you, you know what I mean, you're scared. Just get out there, right? And the more proficient you become, I mean, most people don't even know how to, handle their firearms, I don't even want to say effectively, but to handle their firearms at a level where it's subconscious, right? Develop that skill before you come talking about, you know, hiding behind, like, you know, shooting out of cars and doing all this stuff that you're not prepared for, right? Like build the skills first. And then once you build the skills, you will naturally fall into place with the things that you're interested in, right? And then you're going to enjoy it. Right, so for for most people, most firearms owner, owners, they will never get into that gunfight, right? They'll never have that happen. That knock at the door at night's never gonna happen, right? So, but you're preparing yourself, you just get into a point where you can feel comfortable with your skill set and your place in being, right? But I mean, you know, I don't know why we're compartmentalized with everything that's going on, I man. Just shoot, have fun. I think that's all I got right there. Nah, we appreciate you for sharing, man. 100%, man. Valid points being made across the board. Um, I don't know your name, brother. I'm sorry. It just says iPhone. Did you want to contribute to the conversation or you just want to listen? Uh, that's probably me. It's Jordan. The controversy. <laughs> <laughs> Not too much, brothers. All right. So first off, uh, I came in late, so I kind of missed like half of this. Um, I have a large family. I got like seven kids, so I had to do some stuff with them. And so sorry if you hear them in the background. So just pretty apology for that. But um, I did get to hear the last three people speak. And so I think there's like a misconception about what we're saying, really, which is causing this controversy, I guess you could say. I don't think anybody's saying that competition shooting is like necessarily a bad thing. Like, per se, like, oh, you know, you're wrong for doing it. You know what I'm saying? The only thing I was bringing up the other day was that if I, okay, so I do a lot of shooting around a lot of different people, right? Some people with military backgrounds, some people with law enforcement backgrounds, some people just regular civilians, right? And um, so a lot of people that I found that have only shot competition and don't do the tactical side of it, carry those things into the training when you try to introduce them into uh, tactical training it's muscle memory right the other guy he's talking about you know um you never know what's going to happen in a gunfight but you know so train this train that that's true you never know you someone could walk up and shoot you in the back of the head and never be the wiser you know what i'm saying but the point of training is so that you can carry something out without even thinking about it like when he's mentioned that he sidestepped the guy that's a subconscious movement that he made thanks to his training so the only thing we was like pointing out the other day is that if you come from a military background and you have like years and years of the right kind of tactical training, then it doesn't really affect you as much. But if a shooter does say like a civilian, like a blank slate, right, um, is out here sh shooting competition all the time, when it does come to that real world situation, there is a realistic chance that they're going to carry bad habits from the competition into that gunfight. Now, um, the other guy I was talking about, you know, what's most important is, you know, being able to acquire your target quickly and shoot, you know, like, but that's, that's only like such a minimal part of tactics. 
And if you were really say, just like say clearing your house, right? If you were taking like a corner or going in, entering a room, if you pied the room correctly, you should clear almost the majority of the room, 99% of the room without ever even entering that room. But your gun should be fixed on the target already. All you got to do is pull the trigger. But um, basically what we are saying is that if you shoot too much competition, because again, 5,000, it takes 5,000 repetitions to master something. And the reason that you train so much is to build that muscle memory. So if you're training the wrong things, you're going to do the wrong things in combat. And that could just get you killed. Like the other guy talking about boxing and stuff where he's talking about, you know, a boxer never says it's bad to train. But I boxed a long time in one of the best MMA schools in the whole country. If you were to telegraph your punch before you threw it, they're going to correct that. You know, you, you don't train the wrong way. You train the right way. Otherwise, you're going to do the wrong thing once you get in your match. So tact or uh, competition shooting is good in the sense that it can sharpen your marksmanship and your shooting speed, I guess, is the, if that's what you guys are saying. But you can learn those things also in tactical training. You can learn those things also on the flat range without picking up the bad habits of, you know, reloading from um, behind cover or overexposure and stuff. So you can even do both, but it's important to get the good balance so that way – you have that tactical training behind you too. So when the right situation comes or really the wrong situation comes, you have those skills to fall back on subconsciously. If that makes sense to you. No, I, I, I do agree with the last portion of what you said, as far as balance, I think that's very important. Um, but I don't like one of the things that we've been kind of pushing back on is the whole idea of you shoot a competition that's going to get you killed in the streets. And you kind of, touched on something like that. I don't think anyone, and I don't want, I can't speak for everyone, but I don't believe that at least the overwhelming majority of people that do shoot competitions are going out there feeling as though that's realistic. No different than the person that goes to your local indoor range, stands in their phone booth and does everything directly in front of their target. They don't think that's what they would do in, you know, an actual self-defense situation, right? It's just ways that you get reps to use your tool. So with competition shooting, what we're saying is that competition shooting is strictly learning how to run your gun more efficiently. That's it. Then hopefully you can take those skills and apply them to whatever other scenario you want, whether that's plinking in the backyard, whether that's, like you said, balance, right? Taking a self-defense oriented course, which for most of us is going to be like what everybody was talking about, a self-defense situation and not necessarily uh, room clearing, or you know, searching for some terrorist or anything like that that people have visions in their mind, right? That's not going down, right? Um, it's somebody kicking your door at 2 a.m. How do you protect yourself and or your family? Um, but I don't personally believe that doing that is gonna get you killed in the streets, um, especially if you have balance because all the, the training that I, I'm not saying I've had a million classes, but the training that I have taken in classes and people who have been you know, teaching me things about using cover and things like that, not once did I apply anything that I would have done in competition in that scenario, right? I wasn't jumping out and reloading in the open. I wasn't dropping half mat, full mags on the ground. And, you know, I wasn't doing any of that um, because in that situation, I understood that this is not a game, which competition is strictly a game. So that's kind of, I think, where we kind of push back on that part because we understand what it is. And I think people that haven't had as much experience in competition maybe don't understand it as well. So maybe they, they see it from afar and they're looking at it as something different than what it actually is. I don't know if you think that's fair. I'll give you a chance to respond because I know that you're the only person that kind of has an opposing view in here. So we definitely don't want to overwhelm you. So I wasn't talking about people with like a balanced background. I was talking more so because I run into it all the time, you know, people who strictly shoot competition. I see people all the time where the competition is 99% of what they do. They don't go take those tactical courses. They don't put in that training, which tactical training is not like you think you're like a Navy SEAL out here. It's literally just learning the basics of combat and how to apply your firearm. You know what I'm saying? But if you never practice those things, then you're not going to just magically apply them the correct way. Not saying that you don't know that you're going to go not reload in the open or anything, but it could be a subconscious thing you do because that's what you've always done. You're not going to think about it. You know what I'm saying? And um, self-defense like really stretches to like way more than just someone kicking in your door. You know what I'm saying? You could be in a 
a Kroger or whatever, and someone starts shooting up the store. You know what I'm saying? You could be at a college and someone starts shooting you from a, a clock tower. You know what I'm saying? So um, I see it all the time when we, we train a lot out here and stuff, and people who do shoot more competition and less, like, actual tactical training, when we go and we set up, like, a little mock kill house with the situations and stuff, they carry those same things. They try to run through the situation as fast as they can. They rarely use their uh, cover in an effective manner. And the overexposure is just real. So if you have the balance, that's great. You know what I'm saying? I was speaking more so about the blank slate. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I was trying to stress is that it's more important, in my opinion, to do more of the tactical training than the competition shooting. Because if you're doing competition all the time, you're going to do what your body's used to. It's just a fact. If you, You're going to do what you train. You fall back on it subconsciously when you when you all the shit hits the fan. That's what the whole point of training is to build that muscle memory, that subconscious action. So that's really what we are talking about is more so people that don't have that tactical background that are doing most of this competition shooting. And, you know, it's fun. It's, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's fun. You know, sports, good way to spend your like time, I guess. You know what I'm saying? But if that's the majority of your training, those things most definitely can get you killed in the street, get you killed in your home, get you killed in the grocery store. And it's just a fact. Tactics aren't developed for no reason. There's like the other guy earlier was mentioning the military brings it in. Um, if you guys don't believe me, you can go every Tuesday and talk on a page called TR Live, right? Which where they bring the members of fifth group special forces on a live stream, right? The military has a certain budget. They will pay to take almost any course from any teacher around the country because they have to spend that money. Fifth group brought in, paid over $25,000 to bring in some of the best pro competition shooters in the world. And the whole fifth group said it was a waste of time towards the application of what they're actually using their job towards. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah, sure. It's good to run and gun, but it's like, it's good to be able to acquire target quickly. It's good to be able to shoot accurately. It's good to know your weapon manipulations, but there's just so much more that goes into it than that. And it's like, what are you trading for that you know what I'm saying? So you might be able to pick up two good skills here, but you're picking up four bad skills at the same time. Anything you can learn in competition as well, you can learn from the flat range or you can learn in your combat courses. And people don't, like, you might not agree with this at all, but people don't get better because they're shooting competition. People get better because of the training they put in for the competition. You didn't gain your ability to draw your firearm because you ran this course today. You gained that ability to draw your firearm well because you sat in your living room and you did it a million times that week. No. You, gained, you sat on the range and you shot, you drew and you shot your target a million times that week. That's where you learned those skills and you applied those skills to your competition. But at the end of the day, it's a game. So like, and when you're shooting a competition, you're going to do sloppy shit. And if you're shooting competition all the time and that's what you're doing the majority of your time, Best believe you're not just going to magically switch a flip just because you know better. You like, I'll let you speak in one sec. I'll wrap it up here. But just to go back to the analogy of boxing, right? I box a lot in my life, right? And you could tell someone, like I gave the example of telegraphing a punch earlier, right? You could tell someone a million times, don't draw your arm back before you punch. Do not telegraph your punch. But it's going to take someone a long time before they correct that habit. You have to do something 5,000 times the right way before it's actually ingrained into your mind. And if you're doing something 5,000 times the wrong way, best believe that's what you're going to fall back on. No. I think it, I think it's it does. Well, so, hold, um, hold on real quick, Jason. So you said a lot, so I don't want to – it's going to be hard to – since it's just you, essentially. <laughs> um We'll, we'll go point by point. So, Jason, if you could just pick one point that you want to respond to, um, and then we'll do it that way. That way we can kind of keep the conversations and we can kind of follow everything. So the brother right. said a lot. Nothing wrong with what he said as far as, you know, him, you know, unpacking a lot of information. But we want to make sure the conversation uh, is easy to follow for people that might be seeing this later on. So if you don't mind, Jason, if you could just pick one point that you may want to push back on, agree with, or whatever, and just address that. Well, I, will, I want to say that everything, a lot of what he was saying was a something. 
and and whatever experience he's speaking from his own personal experience. Whereas me, you, and Quasi, not only do we shoot competition as a hobby, but we also take training classes, and we understand how to buy a room. So, in the world that he's experienced, maybe that's the case. But that's a that's a really broad brush to to, to paint with only only a limited experience. People that he's interacted with in in his in his region or area of the country that he's in, because everybody that I know that we shoot in Atlanta has done some form of tactical training and continues to do some form of tactical training. And there's no such thing as the right way. There's multiple ways. Your tactics will always be dependent on your situation. So there's not a one steadfast way. I do want to add one last thing and I'm gonna let you take over, Will. We talk about military training. We are civilians. We don't walk around with gear on. We don't have a team to cover our ass when we fuck up. So all this talk, I, I, I like civilian-based training that speaks directly to the point of how I will deal with situations or the potential, the multiple potential things that I can deal with as a civilian. Because we're not gonna have a team to save our ass when we fuck up. Am I able just to say one thing about that last part and then I'll pass it back to you? Go ahead, go ahead, and then we'll let uh, we'll let Brother Richard chime in. Looks like he wants to say something. Go ahead, Jordan. Uh, all right, so basically when I'm talking about military training, I'm not talking about like, okay, we're going to take a platoon and we're going to take this airfield. I'm not talking about that at all. But military style training is just literally just tactics. Anyone can apply tactics to their life. The police use the same style training that the military does too. You know what I'm saying? You can totally apply the same kind of training that the military uses to your actual life like if you were to you know again clear your home just because the military goes and fights wars and wears all that gear and shit doesn't mean that you can't apply the concept of pieing a corner to your house doesn't mean that you can't apply those basic skills to your life anyone can use those skills to their advantage just because you're a civilian doesn't mean that tactics can't benefit you that's all I was going to say Go ahead, Brother Richard. I mean, so now I got a kind of better understanding of like what's going on. Like I ain't met a lot of people in the room in person, <clears throat> but I'm familiar with everybody by way of social media, right? And I think I think what, what you're missing, um, brother, is that there's levels to this, right? You can you can judge new shooters. We judge new shooters all the time. But I think you're in a room full of people that are on a different level on a different playing field with a different mindset than most of the people that you encounter, right? So for us, it's not singular. For us, like, we do this. Like, this is what we spend, we invest in, like, time, energy, money, resources, thought. Like, we, we don't, we play both sides of the field, right? Because we see how it all comes together, right? So when you talk about tactics, like, <clears throat> you know, elevated mindset we're never team we're never team oriented because we know that most of the time that when we encounter stuff we're going to be by ourselves riding in our cars sitting in our houses we're doing one man cqb right we're we're not going to practice a team tactic where the first person is is expendable right we have a deep understanding of tactics right just because we shoot competition it builds upon it i shoot idpa Right, I shoot IDPA and USPSA, but I favor IDPA more because it just feels natural for me to stand behind cover and shoot, right? But USPSA is fun. I love running and gunning. I love burning it down, but they make you better on both sides for whatever it is that you do. So then when you do take the tactical training, quote unquote, you're more efficient, right? You set yourself apart from the people who sit on the couch all day than the people who actually run their gun whether it be a pistol, a rifle, whatever you got. So, I mean, you know, I, I encourage you to take your knowledge base and step into the competition world and not be so segregated in your own training so that you can see how these things come together. Um, so if I could just answer to that. Um, I like travel the country like every year training with like the best operators I can find. Just this morning I was training with 
a bunch of retired military people out of the Naval Special Warfare Program, all sorts of people like that all the time. I spend tens of thousands of dollars shooting every year. That's what I do. That's literally what I do all the time. My job requires it. That's what I do. I have a very wide exposure to different kinds of shooters. And you don't need to be in a team to apply tactics. Even a one-man situation is also a tactical situation. But through different shooting, uh, you know, trainings and just like my experience and such, even through martial arts and such, right? And no matter what you do, honestly, in life, I've always been taught when you do something, you should always practice it the right way because that's what's going to further your skills. That's what's going to actually master your skills. And there's nothing in competition that you're learning that you can't also learn in other forms of training without also doing the negative things because let's face it you're not gonna run a scenario in a competition 100 percent the right way because your time would be horrible you you lose every competition that you take you know so i just figured if you're gonna send some lead down range why would you do something the wrong way when you could just practice the right way all the time and i get that it's fun it's a good way to spend your time and such and there are skills that you can gain from it but at the same time you're combating your actual training as well. Uh, brother Quasi, go ahead and unmute yourself, Quasi. Quasi, I muted you. I'm muting everybody that's not muting themselves. I'll do it for you. All right, don't worry. <laughs> so I would like to know, you, Jordan, you've spent 10,000s, tens of thousands of dollars in, in training, right? Shooting, this thing is about the actual shooting, being accurate, being fast, putting rounds down range accurately and fast. You're on this, on this call, you have some very high level shooters on the call itself. I would want to know if you went to a competition, a USPSA competition and you shot, which it's, 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 it's fun and game, right? But you, you're going to be timed and judged on how accurate and fast you put rounds down range. If you shot this and you found yourself at the bottom, which if you haven't shot USPSA and learned to shoot fast and accurate on a competition level, not no, not tactical. I shot with a whole bunch of people today that were all super tactical and blew them out. If you're not leveling yourself up on the shooting aspect of it, the shooting, that's what competition is, the shooting part. You spent thousands and thousands of dollars. But if you're in, if you're in a hallway and you're going against a competition shooter, at, uh, I'm a master class, you're in a hallway, you're going against someone that's a competition shooter. If you're in the streets, you, may, you might have a car between you and that person. Un I would let you know that I, 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 the survivability is very minimal that you would survive that, that altercation. Not because you have it, have the tactical know-how, it's because of your shooting that you're limiting yourself on getting better on the shooting aspect of it, that you're limiting that part. You need both tactical, but when it's time, it's you and that person in a room, you and that person in the street, that tactical, isn't going to say you going against a high level shooter if it's competition. Reason it's just because we've learned to put a shit ton of rounds accurately, moving, shooting, down range. That there's no tactical anything that's going to save your life if it was me and you in the street. And what I would suggest for you to do is just to to, to to open your eyes, go to a USPSA match, shoot it, and watch how there is a level that you're missing, levels that you're missing, that it could only add to all the wonderful knowledge that you currently have. It would add to it. Can you imagine if you, if you took all of the knowledge that you've gained and then you actually up your shooting part. I'm not talking about tactical. I'm talking about the shooting aspect 
of competition. That's what this whole discussion is about because we keep making it a versus, a shooting versus tactical, and it's not. They're all one. Those guys that I'm talking about at the range today, they laughed when it was just like, God damn, I don't, I don't, understand, I don't understand why. These are operators at Quantico. So I, I don't, I don't know. So anybody, somebody else can can take it, or if well, you want to we'll respond, let, we'll let uh, we'll let the brother what? respond first before anybody else jumps in because he's yep. the only one with that stance. So we'll let him kind of. Yep. So um, we always apply a timer to our training. I'm a very fast shooter. If you you're actually friends with me on my old Facebook, I can reactivate it, and I have several sub second through a retention holster, not a just pull out for a competition holster, a retention holster, level three retention holster, sub second shots on target. When I was training at the tactical rifleman um, training in Tennessee last year or the year before that, I actually outshot the Green Beret. I'm a very fast shooter, and we always apply speed and accuracy to our training. It'd be ridiculous in any form of training not to do that at all. So I think Wait. that you're kind of assuming that because I'm not running competition that I don't see the value in being able to have a fast holster draw or uh, well, being able to put rounds on my target quickly. But another thing you're assuming is that you're always going to know what the situation is. And that goes back to what that uh, older brother who was a cop was saying. You don't know the situation. So maybe if me and you were in like the wild west and we was like standing in the middle of a dusty road and a tumbleweed blew in between us, you know, there's a fair chance between us. You know what I'm saying? But that's not quite always the situation. So take a mass shooter situation, for example. Mass shooting situations are always ambushes. They're not going to say, hey, I'm right here. Get ready. On the count of three, we're going to draw. It's not that at all. And your gun should honestly, at that point, once you hear shots down the hall or around the block or whatever, your gun should be already out if you feel like you're in that kind of situation already. It's not going to be whoever can draw and shoot something fastest. You, in most situations, like the other guy was saying, you don't know the circumstances. You don't even know if you, like, take the guy in Walmart a couple years, for example. There was a guy trying to shoot up to Walmart, and he shot the guy and moved up on the guy. And then the guy's wife, who he brought with him, shot the uh, good guy in the back of the head. Tactics goes way further than I feel like you're assuming it does. You know what I'm saying? And every day we train in our tactics, there's always a shot timer involved. Accuracy is always involved. If we look at our targets, every shot is expected to be in the A zone. Everything is expected to be a quick, accurate shot, as quick as right. you can sh accurately shoot, because if you miss, that's someone's grandma you're hitting down the right. street, and you're but, accountable for that round. But, Jordan, really quick, you're, you're, what I'm saying, without you knowing, when I was a C-class shooter, I felt that I was fast, which I was in, in, in a general sense. A C class shooter, you could be, right? And then you're you're feeling because you're comparing it to a green beret or something like that, right? It's relative to you. What I'm saying is there's much greater levels that you might not be open to to understand that there's levels to this. We were when we, as Will and I, we, when we first started, we thought we were pretty good. We thought we were fast. Like that, that's not even a and then we got to C class and we we're like, yo, I'm really burning it down. And then we got to B class, and, you know, we're really burning it down, right? You know? And so all I'm saying is that, yes, for what you think is fast or what you think is fast and accurate, it's not necessary, necessarily true, your perception and your experience in what fast shooting is. I implore to you, Jordan. I am I watched you guys' videos. I'm just as fast as I'm telling you right now. But the thing is that you you just assume that I can't shoot a gun fast. Like I'm I don't not know where saying that. that. I'm coming. not saying that, Jordan. I'm simply saying go. I'm saying go expose yourself to fast and accurate shooting. You will see a difference between a high level shooter and those that that are not. And so all I'm saying is that what you think you might be might just be a wee bit off. And it's not, it's not, it's not because it's, it's only because you just don't know what you don't know. I'm not saying you, you're not, you're not close. I'm not saying that you're not a 
but you're you're you can't there's no video you can look of mine and say oh i'm that fast it, it it's hard oh, to you guys. yeah that's the famous line from everybody is that they watch our videos and they're fast but that's but garbage. i'm saying this if y'all put a, if you if you guys put based on what you were just saying though not jason but quasi if i'm pronouncing that right um if you took jay mcclug you know who jay mcclug is Mr. Yeah, whatever. You took him, right? And you took uh, someone from a dev group team, right? And you put them on two opposite team or sides of a building, right? Do you think that Jay's just going to automatically win because he's a high-level shooter and he can shoot his gun fast and accurate? Brother, but, I don't think anyone is making that point, though. That, I feel like he was just you... making that point. Like, no, there's that's not levels to saying. this for real. There's levels to this for real. And shooting fast and accurate is at the very bottom tier of survival in a gunfight. Okay, that's we, not the point here. The point is you need to go out and expose yourself to competition one time. I just have one time. Okay, and where I, did you land that? Where did you land that? And what, what sport was it? What sport was it? USPSA or IDPA? No, I didn't shoot that shit. I sh we okay, shoot so, competitions right okay, so now. We're, 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 we're not talking about that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I, I got to cut in on, on some yeah. of the stuff that was just said. So what you said about being fast is at the bottom. That's yeah. wrong. That's wrong. And I want to go back to um, something you had said earlier about pie in a room. Mm -hmm. If you pie a room and you clear the first 90% of it, and the guy is hiding in the last 10%, you're going to see each other at the same time, right? You're going to see no. each other at the same time. There's, yes, there's always are. a blind spot in the room, yes, and that's why you have hold to... On, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Everybody, everybody, hold on a second. Everybody, hold on a second. Just, yeah. just so we can make sure this is clear. Now, we've been giving each other a chance to talk, so let's continue right. that and not start talking over each other. So right. even if you don't agree with what the person is right. saying, allow them to finish. I'm going to give you a chance to respond. Let's just keep this orderly because this is an important topic because it's holding us back. And as a group right. of people, we're already way too fucking behind. Right. As I'll a group. just write it down. Okay. Yeah, so just same thing. I wrote down some things that I didn't right. necessarily agree with, but I'm going to allow y'all to rock out. So right. go ahead, brother, if you would continue All with right. your... Okay. So like I said, I've, I've done a lot of room clearing. I've pied plenty of corners. I, like, I know how this stuff works, right? So you come in, you're pieing a corner. You, and you're right. You, you're taking out. You're pieing the corner. You clear 90% of the room. The guy's in the last 10%. That means you are going to see each other at the same time. You're going to see him. He's going to see you. What it's going to come down to is your reaction speed and your accuracy. Tactics, and, and I'll, I'll get into this in a minute, but you have military movement, which is tactics, and then you have shooting. These are two different departments, right? When they, this is what I said earlier before you, before you got here, So, but I'll reiterate myself. Military movement and tactics, its entire purpose is to put yourself into a position where you can effectively engage targets and you make it hard for them to effectively engage you. Do you agree with that? Okay. Yes. Shooting is the act of breaking a, a trigger of some sort and putting a round onto your target, right? Mm -hmm. Being fast at shooting is much more important than being good at movement simply because if you are faster, you will win. If you do that clear and you clear 90% of the room and you all see each other at the same time and you have a 0-1-9 split and the guy's cutting a 2-5, you're going to win. You're going to win every time. That's what we're saying about competition shooter it makes you a faster and more accurate shooter tactics are important i've when i got so i came right out of the military at fort hood and i started shooting the, the local competitions and i've trained with green berets i've trained with rangers i'm from virginia i've trained with seals i've trained i've trained all of them i know guys that were that that was a marine recon instructor then he went on to taught seals he was he was my mentor before i went in I've, I've shot with all these dudes. I shot with them. I shoot middle of the pack in competitions. This is what I'm saying. Those guys are fast. Those guys are good. But their skill set is not being fast at putting rounds on target. The T-Rex the guy, uh, Bakins, he's a civilian, and he will outshoot 
the highest level operators all day long. Which and means, he's A class. Right. Right. And this and, and this is what I'm saying. If you had shot with a green beret and you were as fast as as uh uh Kwanzi, you would have blown the green beret out. You should have been saying, I can shoot with him. You should have been saying, I was blowing out Rangers. I was blowing out green berets because I am so, I am USPA, ISPA speed. If you are not blowing those guys out, of, if you aren't at the end of the day, five, 10 seconds faster than those guys, you're not that fast. That's, that, that, that's just how that works. If you're shooting with them, because I did. I shot with active duty Green Berets, active duty like these guys. And, and what you're talking about, clearing rooms and moving to the other side and put them on. Yes. And don't get me wrong. There are absolutely ways that you could get the job done being slower. But don't discount being faster at shooting because that is a different skill than being good at tactics. And competition does help you become a better, faster shooter. That, I just want to make that clear. Yes, tags are important. Uh, and uh, but I want I want to get back into that because you you also said you keep you keep saying tactics, but then you discount a lot of other stuff that that includes. What you were specifically talking about is mount training, military operations and urban terrain. That that's what you're talking about when you say tactics. Because when you say military tactics to me, you are talking about battle drill one alpha, battle drill two alpha, three alpha, four alpha, five alpha, six alpha, seven alpha. And you are talking about VBIT initiated ambushes, and you are talking about calling to fire and a lot of other stuff. None of that applies to civilian shooting. None of that applies. What we are talking about is mount training. So let's let's use the right description so we're accurate with our definitions and what we're talking about. Because there's a lot more that goes into that than just military tactics. Because that's a that's a big umbrella. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Jordan. We'll let you rock out for a minute, and then we'll allow someone else to chime in. So you're talking about speed is more important than movement. That's not true at all. If you're playing a corner and the person, or say you're like got a center fab room, corner fab room, whatever, yeah. and you're trying to pie that room to clear the room before making entry, if you the person knows that you're there before you did that, then you did a horrible job because you already blew your position. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the next part, I'm trying to move through this fast. The next part you're talking about competition makes you faster. Again, competition does not make you faster. The time that you spend on the range preparing for the competition, that's what makes you faster. Third part, you're talking about Botkins. I don't think there's, if you know all those ranges, you know all those seals, you know all those berets, right? Uh, special force operators, all that. I don't think there's a single one of them that's taking Botkins on an operation. I don't at all. So I, and then uh, the other part, at the other part, um, I did, didn't say I sh just shot with Green Brace. I did say I outshot him, first off. Then um, I'm not discounting being fast at all. I'm just saying that you can learn how to be fast without shooting competition. That's all I'm saying. I never said that shooting fast was not important. Then you talk about uh, tactics. I fully understand tactics. I fully understand battle drills. So you talk about battle drills. Break contacts, very important, is it not? You can even apply the uh, tactics from squad attack to learn how to flank a target in the civilian world. You don't need a whole platoon of people to learn how to suppress or flank a target. This you don't need the military to do that. How if, are you and then suppress and you flank talk a target about by yourself. You you're not always like that. Everywhere I go, there's at least three or four people with guns with me. First off, and then second off, like um, at my job, I work arms. There's Three of us at the minimum all the time. In my home, there's a whole <laughs> building of people here with guns. At the same time, you talk about an ambush, right? Knowing how to break through an ambush and assault through an ambush is also equally as important as knowing how to do military movements to suit. Uh, I understand what you're talking about with movements and what you dictate is, you know, like, okay, these are the real tactics, whatever. But in reality, they're all tactics and they're all important. You guys keep assuming in these situations that the person you're fighting knows you're there or you know the person uh, that you're fighting, they know that you're there. That's not the reality for the majority of situations. It's not. No, no one's ever just standing in front of you and it's like a, a, a one, two, three draw or you're going to take 10 paces and shoot thing. Again, going back to the first part, if you're pieing a corner 
in just a clear room, you're clearing, like you said, the first 90% of the room before you make entry, right? Even if you're even going to make entry, right? If the persons in the room know that you're doing that, you already fucked up. The whole point of doing that, you're supposed to be doing it slowly and quietly, taking it inch by inch by inch by inch and quietly so that you can get the tactical advantage over someone. You can get the drop. You can get the edge on someone. You're not supposed you're not just going to stomp your feet while you're doing it. And then both of you are going to shoot while you're doing that. If they knew you were there, they just shoot through the wall before that you even knew that. One second. Uh, I I agree with that. But you keep you keep turning one off to promote the other. All things being equal means meaning you're good at being stealthy and making that entry. If you are faster, you will be better. That's that's my point. That's not always the situation either. But yes, it is. It, It is because if you if you if it comes down to whose reaction time and whose split times are better, which Man, I'm telling like I'm telling you, you you and here's the thing. Again, we're conflating military drills with self-defense situations. Because in the military and how you do room clearing and room entries, you are rushing into a room. I've been the point guy a lot, I've been the two guy a lot, I've been the three guy a lot. You are running literally into a room. So this this whole stealth that's more self defense shooting when you're talking about someone's come in for a home invasion or, or or something like that. But if you're if you're kicking in doors in Iraq, bro, you're not walking doing shit. You're you're you know you're stacking up. You breach and one guy goes one way, the next guy goes the other way, the next and, and then you flood into the room. You win with overwhelming fire, and that's why I I want to make sure that we're not conflating two situations because one isn't going to happen and the other is what's going to happen is a guy's going to come into your house in the middle of the night and you're going to have to find him and engage him effectively and that will come because yeah like you said using those stealth tactics using um the the tactics that you do learn and then don't get me wrong we're all for learning tactics but at the end of the day it's going to come down to who gets the shot on target first that's that's and that comes down to who is the fastest and you get those reps through com- through competition. Yes, you can look I've trained hundreds of thousands of rounds. Competition is completely different. It is a completely different mindset, it is a completely different environment, it is a completely different feeling and is the only thing that can replicate being downrange and being in those situations. So when you say you don't get better in competition, that is false. You hone your skills in competition. The competition is the certification of those skills, and it is exposing you to the highest level of stresses and the highest level of realism that you can get outside of an actual engagement. And another point, and I wanted to bring up the and, and show my gratitude for the, for the older brother and, and dropping his wisdom, I completely agree. And my philosophy when it comes to training is to not train for a given situation, but to give myself the largest and the sharpest toolkit to be able to handle the situation I do get into. There are some situations you're just not going to win, like what the brother was talking, you're just not going to win it. But if you are fast and you are accurate and you are well trained with home tactical skills, you will have the best chance in the highest percentage of survivability. That's all I'm getting at. Um, you know, feel free to rebuttal or, or, or whatever you got. Uh, when I was saying that, I'm not saying that, obviously, if you're in a gunfight, oh, wait, am I on mute? You can hear me. No, no, you're good. I, no, you're good. Obviously, if you're in a gunfight, whoever shoots the other person, I mean, that's not even always the case. You know, some there's plenty of cases where someone's got shot first and still put down the uh, target. You know what I'm saying? But odds are, if you got the shots off first you're you know, and accurately, then you're going to win. Yeah, that's true. No one's ever been denying that this whole time. But when I said that, that's not always the case is because, and this is less applicable, but not always to the civilian world. When you're in your training, had they ever thrown like a curveball at you when you entered the room, say that there was a um, barricaded position? Hell yeah, absolutely. Barricaded position, locked doors. So, so going and dedicating to that room and being fast isn't going to save you in that situation. That's where you would apply tactics. So if you have you ever read the book like No Easy Day or whatever? Yeah. So he talks about that in that book where they failed and failed on this uh, kind of funnel the whole time because of a barricaded situation until one time they said, okay, let's go through the window. Now, again, that's not as much in the civilian world. I was just saying that's where my – I'm just saying that's not always the case. It's being fast 
is not always going to save you there. Sometimes you just got to use your brain and get the the drop on people. You got to get the advantage on people because if you couldn't let the person not know you're there at all, that's going to give you the biggest advantage. If someone come in my house, I'm not hunting them down. I'm setting up a fatal funnel. I'm not going to like, clear. there's nothing on the lower floor of my house that's like, I'm going to die for, you know what I'm saying? I got my family with me at this point and we're setting up a fatal funnel. It's not like I'm going to, you know, be down there trying to run and gun everybody at all. So that's what I'm saying that tactics kind of come in handy right there. That's just like off of some of the things you were just saying though. But no one's saying that shooting fast is not a good thing. No one's saying that at all. And that's where this whole kind of misconception of what I'm saying is coming in through this whole conversation is that, again, first part, which you guys seem to disagree with, but it's the honest truth, whether you feel like it's not, it is, it is. You don't get better from the competition. You get better in preparation for the competition. All those countless hours you put in on the range, all those countless hours you put in in your living room, that's what is ultimately making you better. You applying that is great, you know what I'm saying? But you wouldn't have anything to apply if you didn't put in that time and that effort and that work, you know what I'm saying? But no one's saying that like competition in that sense is bad. What we're saying is that there are negative habits that you could pick up through competition. That's it. Like, that's all we're saying is that there are negative habits. And it would be crazy to deny that people couldn't build habits off of doing something. If the more you repeat something, the more likely you are to make it a habit. And that's all anyone's been saying the whole time from my perspective and from what Greg was saying the other day and even what Brother Babu said in this video the other day. Like, no one's saying competition is bad. No one's saying shooting fast is bad. We're just saying that there's negative things that you do in competition that you wouldn't apply to the real world. And if you guys can flip that switch, that's great. You have a, obviously a very experienced background. You got thousands of rounds, like you said, probably thousands of hours of work you put in that you can fall back on. But the average civilian, them shooting competition 90% of the time, and then, okay, they just went and took this tactical course once every, like, nine months isn't going to rebuttal that. It's not going to make up for that. All right, so, uh, Brother Chad, did you want to add to the conversation, or have you been patiently waiting? Uh, I, I, I want to add just a little bit, and I apologize for being tardy. Good evening, y'all. No, um, yeah, yeah, just picking up from, from what I heard, there seems to be this um, almost a binary either or when it shouldn't be, and I think that's been alluded to a few times, right, um, since I've been here, probably before, and there should never be an either or relative to tactics or defensive shooting versus competitive shooting. Um, and, and I put in the chat, there's a link to an article from a, a U.S. Army marksman who basically is saying um, through that article that there is some transfer of skill between or from competitive shooting to tactical shooting, but sometimes there's not necessarily an equitable transfer from the tactical shooting to competitive shooting. And I think that, that that's fair to recognize. Um, but I think where we're missing the mark at a lot of times is, and again, it is in that space where we create this binary, and I will call it a false binary, where it has to be this either or, when like 90% of the majority of civilian gun owners don't drop China fire, right don't all. practice, yeah. Yeah. don't take a class, don't compete, don't do any of that stuff, right? And where the comp where competition shooting becomes important is that it is a low, it's a, it, it reduces the barrier of entry to getting better at shooting overall, right? Because like you talking about, I'm, I'm, I got some classes, I'm doing my budget for training this year for classes I want to take. Already, I'm at about $4,000 in, in classes I'm trying to take this year, right? Top of, like do, going to competition practice and competing in matches is not going to cost me that much. Right. And so I think for the average civilian where competition becomes valuable is that it gets you reps, number one, and it provides a quantifiable measurement of your skill set. And that's where the value of competition is not that. And, and Jordan, I actually agree with your statement in that. Competition in and of itself doesn't make you better, but it's the work you put in to get better at competing that makes you better. Right. But the competition provides that quantifiable lens 
of your improvement. And that becomes necessary because people are, are driven by, 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 by goals and stuff, right? That, that's the thing that, that human beings are driven by. And so if you see this level of progression here, naturally you want, you're gonna wanna do it more so you can reach another level of progression. I look at it like my daughter in karate, she hated it at first, but then when she got that yellow or that yellow stripe, she was like, all right, I gotta get this next one so I can, so I can get the belt. Then she got the yellow belt, she, and then she started getting stripes and belts and stripes and belts. And she's been, she's been consistent in practicing going and not just doing it for the test, but, but ultimately the work leading up to the test is what's get her, what gets her to those, those uh, 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 levels of promotion. And, and that's what it really is. It, it, the competition is the quantifiable measurement of your skill set, really like in those moments. The tactical defensive shooting or, or what have you, that is invaluable because again, everything that, uh, um, it's just certain stuff in tactics, you know, with defensive shooting, you're not gonna do, right? Like you're not gonna hang on one leg around a corner in a defensive situation. I can't fathom that somebody would necessarily want to do that, right? Because it doesn't necessarily seem like the safest thing to do. But you see it all the time in USPSA and IDPA shooting videos and stuff, right? You wouldn't necessarily do that in, in, in a tactical or self-defense situation, but it makes sense competitively because you're trying to get the shots on target quickly. Um, I, I'm saying all that to say that there's a lot of room and a lot of bleed over between the two into one another. Uh, and, and to have this mindset that they should be, I guess, mutually exclusive. And I'm not hearing that they should be mutually exclusive, but it, it's kind of leading in that direction. This idea that they should be mutually exclusive, I believe is patently false, simply because um, there's a quantifiable thing with the competitive shooting that necessarily, that isn't necessarily there with tactical or defensive shooting. That's all I got for now. All right, Brother Jordan, go ahead. You want to rock out for about a minute, and then we'll allow either Bruce or Brother Richard to jump in, and we'll kind of cycle through. So I agree with, like, pretty much all that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not – and, again, I, I, I feel like I'm kind of repeating myself, but I've never said this whole time that there's not transferable skills or there's not any bleed over. I've said the whole time that there are things you can gain, you know, from shooting competition. I'm saying, though, that there's a lot of, like you mentioned, the thing, like, I know no one's, I, I had hoped to God at least, that nobody's going to stand on their one leg and shoot around the corner. But there, you see a lot of silly stuff like that in competition. When I say silly stuff like that, I'm not even saying necessarily, like, something that dramatic. But even something as far as, like, just the reloading and open, standing in the middle of a window, um, you know, shooting without cover and stuff. Like, those things, to me, are kind of silly. And, um and I get also what you mean by the quantifiable measure. You know, you're seeing that your hard work from your training is paying off by doing well in the competition. But I feel like for a lot of us, I guess, we're like not as like um, in need of that. You know what I'm saying? I see my hard work pays off every time I run it. If I say, OK, I want to be able to run this box drill in this time. And when I hit that time, it doesn't matter if I'm at a competition. Now, I'm always applying pressure to myself because I have a natural drive to, like, be better. You know what I'm saying? So every time I hit that time doing that drill, that's a quantifiable measurement to me every time. I win every time I do that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I get, you know, I did martial arts too. It feel good to win a boxing match. But you, you win quantifiable measurements every day. Every time you train, there's quantifiable measurements. Jordan? So, yeah. I just got a question though. You have you're setting those numbers up, and that number that you're saying is something that you're creating for yourself. Competition will compare you to Will, to Jason, and 10 million other people that compete. You creating those numbers for yourself, you might be satisfied with those numbers. But when you put those numbers comparatively to someone else, it's gonna be, you're gonna be surprised, Jordan. Just as I'm, just as you say, you know, you see a shoot and that you think that, you know, we're on the same level. I'm, I, I think there's gonna be a, a rude awakening, your first competition, your first, your, your first getting into the game. And so I think that, yes, you're right, you can push yourself. But just like I said, you're, you've got to take the national numbers and say, this is what I wanna be nationally. I'll even, I can add 
I'll, I'll let it continue. But I, I'll, I'll give you an incentive that you should not be able to, 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 to detract, to just to try and then um, go from there. But go ahead. Who else needs to say something? Uh, well, just to say something on that, like, uh, are you ever satisfied? Because I know I'm not. Like, just yeah, because my, I get my number it doesn't mean I'm satisfied. There's always I'm, a better time I can get. So I'm always pushing myself. And we, I do shoot with people and compare myself to other people's times all the time. Every time I train. Like, yeah. I don't, like, well, unless I'm training by myself. But most of the time, I'm not training by myself. You know well, what I'm saying? Competition There's always is a, a it's a standardized, it's a national standardization. So you and your friends yeah. might, in, in, a, in a national level, you and your friends might all be, I'm not just being real, mm-hmm might not be good. And so you're thinking that you, you, if me and Will just kept shooting with each other, we would push each other and we did. But on a national level, like if you don't have a standardization to continue to drive to, you'll get caught just like, just like education in the gun world. If you surround yourself with ignorance, you only beget ignorance. You've got to take yourself and put yourself outside in order for you to, to truly know what is my level of skill. And that's why I'm like, I, I'm like, I'm begging you to, to not, for your own good, test yourself against a national standard in USPSA and watch where you are. And I think you're going to be surprised and, and, like and then see. motivated and then motivated. Yeah. I think you'll be surprised and then motivated. Just to reiterate, I don't just shoot with my friends. I travel every year out of my state and shoot with people from all over the country every year. And I would like to, just on a humble note, say that I will never in my whole lifetime, and literally in my whole lifetime, unless some miracle happens, I will never be the fastest person in the world. This is, I'm just being real with myself. I got a full-time job and stuff. I'm not a super rich person that I'm just going to become the fastest shooter in the whole goddamn world. But that's where tactics come in. When you apply the right tactics, you don't always have to be the fastest. It's smarter is better than faster. In the real life, this isn't a USPA or whatever the fuck competition. We're not going on a timer in real life. It's whoever outthinks the person in the gunfight in the majority of situations. And you're thinking in the majority of situations, it's okay, some guy runs up maybe to you and says, give me your wallet or something. But that's not the reality of most situations. This, we're just actually not. And so honestly, having a better combat mindset and having better tactical skills will benefit you way more than being able to shoot fast. Like, especially in my job, I work in an armed position and stuff and uh, I've had to draw my gun three times on my job. Right. You it's never about, I never in any of those times was about how fast can I shoot? You know what I'm saying? It's about applying your mind to the situation. Every situation, like the other guy was saying, is different. And about how is the best way to tackle this situation. The I majority of the time, if you find yourself in a fair fight, then you're a bad fighter. I have a question. It's just the truth, honest truth, yeah. Are the skills, the tactical skills that you have a secret? No, no nothing in the whole gun world is a secret. So it is safe to say that there may be someone who is tactically as proficient as you. Uh, it's like a guaranteed thing, guaranteed thing for sure. So yeah. then, what will be the deciding factor if you meet someone who is tactically as proficient as you? Whoever's tactics work better. No, <laughs> that's war. That's war. That's it's war. My who God. is faster? No, it's not. Look, yes, like, it you, is. So it is faster. I've got a question. I've got a question. I just want to ask you something. You have sure. military experience, right? I do. So, do you have any kind of like combat situation? Like, Absolutely. Yeah. In your experience, right? I deployed to so, Iraq in way, but that's not applicable here. So in but Iraq, right? So, was it always who was faster, or maybe it was that this guy rigged the ID to the door that you guys just opened up? Maybe it was you just drove on the wrong spot of the road. Being faster is not always the, Again, the key but the, to winning but, a fight. But you have to take out situations you're not going to win anyway because never know there is no right? tactic. Well, there is no tactic to, again, diffuse a, a V-bid going off when your convoy is rolling by, man. There is no tactic. There is, actually. That's what the combat engineers. 
You know what I'm saying? I, I My man, so you talk about I when? When did I have engineers? When we were when I was in a scout platoon, a lot of people, and we were people we were 50 kilometers from the nearest element. I, well, I like, didn't what are you, you, what are you talking about? Like, I didn't no, say you did. No, so again, right, no right. So they're for the right. The ID in the road, but there actually is. They make whole no, vehicles, not when you're in a scout platoon, 50 kilometers from the nearest element. There's not. But that's not what you said. You said that there's no tactic. For, for me, the for me, that, in that the would situations make more sense that I, that's what you would have said. Okay, well, I mean, okay, hey. well, I, I'll be clear. Hey, for me, there, there was there, there are situations. Let, let's let's rewind. There are situations where tactics, no matter how good they are, they can be counteracted. That's part of tactics is learning the adversary's tactics and developing tactics to counteract those tactics. So again, that's, that's true. speed, yeah. it will be the deciding factor. It, so okay so you're familiar with your military experience with, say like uh l-shaped ambush right yes is shift, speed shift a factor the there or is the yeah, yeah, factor? Cause we're hauling ass. What, and, and yeah, the l-shaped we're hauling ambush ass. and the l-shaped i'm not i'm talking about you're the ambusher you're the assault right i'm not the, saying that you're in the ambush i'm saying well, that you're the one carrying out the contact Go ahead. i'm saying that you're you're not getting ambushed you're the one carrying out the ambush okay right? yeah is speed the determining factor that's more important or is surprise the more prevalent factor in that? Well, um, if I don't want the L-shaped ambush to work on me, yes, I'm going to want to kill the flanking maneuver before they flank me. No, I'm so, talking about you're the one ambushing the people. I, right. So, what, yeah. what's, so an, okay, an L-shaped ambush is a, mm -hmm. is a reactive contact. So you get engaged and then you initiate your L-shaped ambush, right? So you re you get contact. I call that. That's how that's that's how it works, man. Yeah, I can pull the ranger handbook over here, but that's not a very good L shaped man, ambush. How, how applicable is if, this if, to, if, to if someone is attacking yeah, exactly. right. so Hold on a second. Hold on a second, everybody. Hold on a second, everybody. Hold on, everybody. Hold on. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second, Jordan. For everybody. For everybody. Before we get too far off the rails, let's not. None of us in, well, you might still right. be in the military, but we're not talking, the topic is not military versus. Right. These are not military things. Whoever can't keep themselves, whoever can't keep themselves quiet, I'm just going to mute you or we can be done. We're not going to, I don't want to have a conversation where we're yelling over each other. Just, I'm asking yeah. you, I'm giving everybody a chance to talk. Just pause for a second. Just take, everybody take a deep breath. The conversation is not military tactics versus whatever civilian tactics. We're having a conversation basically yeah. whether or not competition shooting has value and whether or not, as, some, as you mentioned earlier, people will say it'll get you killed in the streets, right? So, yeah, this I just want to say one thing on it. Steer, so I'm just going to ask everybody going forward to make your point surrounding, surrounding. Yeah, that, my point is surrounding that. Like, so you guys keep saying that these are military tactics. There's no such thing as military tactics. Tactics can literally be applied to anybody's life. When we were on patrol the other day, a kid, three kids really, that we were having an issue with, right? Which very well could have killed us, me, a civilian, right? We were having a problem with the kids in the projects that we got, right? And around here, I don't know where your, your guys' neighborhood is like, but a lot of these 13, 14, 15 year old kids got guns, right? So we were having, they yelled some vicinities or whatever at us when we were driving by the first time. We just looped around the block. And one of the kids bent down in the middle of the road. Now, I'm not the lead car. I'm not pointing in this, like, little convoy thing we're doing through the neighborhood, right? But the guy who was stopped his car so he obviously wouldn't run over the kid, right? As soon as he stopped his car, here come the other kids from the side throwing rocks at his car. That could have just as easily been guns that they were shooting. It happens all the time out here. That's an L-shaped ambush right there. That is a textbook L-shaped ambush. L -shaped ambush. So to say that these things only apply to the military bro. and not to self-defense. Yes, it is, bro. Like, All right, so, so we'll, we'll agree to disagree on the L-shaped ambush because I don't want to <laughs> get this stuck. This is the thing. This is what I'm saying. You guys act like hey, these hey, Jordan. aren't hey, ever Jordan. applied in the military. Hey, Jordan. The world. Hey, Jordan. Majority of, yeah. You're hey, Jordan, I've, hey, Jordan, I Jordan, Jordan, I've given you a chance to talk. I'm going to ask that when I'm talking that you don't over talk me. Just please, just please. That's all I'm going to give you a chance to rock out. I'm, I'm giving you I'm giving you a chance yeah. to rock out. All right. Just please. All right. 
let's just move on from that because I don't want to get stuck on what is and what isn't an L-shaped ambush because I don't think that's why anybody got on this Zoom tonight to discuss so, that. Like, I have a it's question. The competition, it's yeah. the competition element. Jason has a question. So, well, I have a question. so let, let's move on to Brother Richard because he's been patiently waiting and allow him yeah. and, then, and then Jordan, I'm going to allow you to respond to Richard. All right? I'm, yeah. I'm giving you a chance to rock out. I'm allow you to, to go ahead and respond to Richard. But J Richard, please go ahead. All right. So I think I think from your perspective, bro, like understanding two things, like what do you actually do for a living? Like, what's your role? Do I can I answer that right now? Or yeah. What's your role? So I in Cincinnati, there's a lack of police. So I do like state security um, and all the projects out here. All right. And you live in Cincinnati, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. So I think that provides a lot more context because there's this you're like speaking from a place of uh, you're you this is this is something that makes you feel more secure in what you do day to day right having that that tactical mindset right makes you feel like you know you're more prepared than what it is because i'm sure at, at the security level that's what they romanticize Right, they romanticize this, and then they they you want to like, you know, be being in the military is romantic, and I'm sure you feel like you're at war every day, right? When you go to work, right? But when you when you step outside of that kind of like pressured situation, and you look at it on a ver on a ver on a global scale of what what we're talking about, like skills and shooting and just marksmanship and different stuff like that you have a better conceptualization of like what's really going on, just not on this day-to-day -day where you feel like you're at war and you're studying like L-shaped ambushes or whatever it is, like just having a more global, more personalized perspective of it, right? And I'm sure it makes you feel very secure in what you do and makes you feel prepared to wake up every day and do it, but the reality of it is that people who are doing it at a higher level in more um, high risk situations are taking advantage of the of the transferable skills, right? And I think that what we're trying to do is convince you to take advantage of it as well, but it, we can't, right? And we probably won't, right? And that's that's your right to not do it. But just like many of us said. In these, in these environments, we're shooting with the Navy SEALs. We're shooting with the Navy shooting team. We're shooting with these different entities that are doing it at a higher pace, right? Just not, you know, where you are, right? So, and I, I know what it's like, you know, being in that situation with, you know, security being the primary focus in some of these high-risk environments, right, for you, right? But there's also um, you know, more that you can learn, right? There's more that you can apply. There's more that you can do to help yourself feel secure when you wake up in the morning to, you know, go do your job day in and day out and not be so focused on, you know, the romanticization of, you know, military tactics. All right, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a stay on, but I'm gonna um, turn my camera off here. Uh, can I just say one thing to him real quick? Just on that, my job doesn't dictate this. If you guys can see my camera right now, can you guys all see my camera right now? Let me flip this around for you. This is a nine millimeter hole through my door, right here into my couch. There's another one in my window. The whole front of my house is shot up. It's all through my neighbor's house too. My goal to become the best proficient gunfighter that I can be is not at all for my job. It, it does most you know, certainly help with my job, but it's actually for my wife that's cooking in the kitchen right now. It's for my seven kids that I have in this house right now, and it's for myself so my mother don't have to bury her son and stuff. It's, it's not about what your job is. Statistically, you have a higher chance of dying in Cincinnati than you ever did in Iraq or Afghanistan, and that's actual public news they put that out for actually most major cities in America. It's just statistics. It's mathematical fact. Not saying that you're not doing high risk things in those places. I'm saying that the murder rate per capita is higher than the casualty rate that the troops were taking at that point. Right. It's not about my job. You never choose when something's going to come your way. 
my four-year-old son that you might have heard in the back background has already seen four people die in his life. I've seen just in the past couple of years, I've seen multiple people die. I've treated gunshot wounds right here in my neighborhood. You don't have to be in the military for these things to be in your life. You don't have to be a police officer or a security guard for these truths to be a part of your life. In a lot of places in this world, the world is just a violent place. And like, kind of like how the other guy was talking about earlier, you know, who shoots fast is better, you know, like whatever. It's kind of that, like that same concept. It's whoever, not always in every situation, because again, you can get the drop on people, but it's whoever is going to be the more proficient and skilled gunfighter in the situation, most of the time going to win the situation. You don't have to be in a specific career field for violence to affect your life. Right. And what we're saying is, bro, and I get that, I get that. Like you're coming from a very like heart heart. You you're settled where you are because you made a decision in your mind that this is how you're going to survive. Right. And what we're saying is like if it's really survival, if you're going on a trip and you don't know where you're going or how things are going to end up, take as much as you can. Don't just limit yourself. Right. Because we're all in the same situation, probably from some of the same similar places with some of the similar, similar experiences. And I don't I don't want to go in just with a jab. Right. Or a hook. Right. I don't want to go in just knowing how to slice the pie. And it's taking me five minutes to find my sight picture. Right. I don't I don't want to do that. Right. If I'm sli- if I'm gonna learn how to slice the pie, when I enter the room, I want to be able to pull the trigger as fast as I can, as accurate as I can, and to drop and move on and to transition targets as fast as I can. Right? Because I'm only one person. So when we talk about using tactics, I'm only one person, right? If it's two or three people in the room, that transition time costs. And USPSA, as much as I you know, I used to hit on USPSA that transition in targets, it matters. So there's a lot of transferable skills. I mean, it's just like if you have a diet of like only one thing and somebody come and tell you that you can make your, you can have more energy or be more efficient. If you introduce something else into your diet, why say no? Right? Because you're trying to survive. Right? So just be willing to introduce more things into your diet, right? To to expose yourself to different stuff because it's it's all for your benefit, bro. And I agree with that, but I don't. I feel like you guys feel like I'm limiting myself. But I probably sit here. If you look around my house again, there's my front door, there's my back door, like all this target's hanging. All there's my laundry room door. I dry fire, I grow, I do all the same things you guys do on the range, in my house, all the time. I'm just questing just as much as you guys are to be better. You know what I'm saying? But if you were to take, like, you know, going back to the professional thing, a skill that is bent on survival in this kind of specific situation, no law enforcement, no military people ever spend their days in training running USPA matches. They don't. You're going to run battle drills like the other guy was saying. You're going to run to the kill house. You're going to so I'm just saying that if I'm going to spend my money and my time away from my family uh, putting ammo down range, I'm going to do it in a sense of training that's for a specific purpose. And my purpose of my gun isn't to win a trophy or a competition. My purpose of the gun is to stop the threat. Uh, so so let's, do this. let's do this since we're, we've been on this journey for a minute. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to allow everybody to rock out for two minutes Get your two minutes, say whatever, say your piece, whatever it is. We'll start with, I guess, Brother Bruce, if you want to add anything more to the conversation. We'll allow everybody to get their word. I'll allow you to, to, to get another uh, two minutes as well, Jordan, because I know you're the only person kind of with your side. I want to make sure you feel like you've been properly heard today. So, if, if Brother Bruce, you want to you wanna, uh, unmute and, and, and do your thing if you like, and we'll give you two minutes. I can unmute you if you need me to. I got you. Can everybody hear me now? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, respect to all the brothers. Um, I think, uh, in, in, in all due respect, I think we're all pretty much saying the same thing. 
I think the only issue really is that uh, uh, the, I think from, from my perspective, I think what everybody's saying is how we get there. Uh, some people prefer to get there through the uh, tactical training. Some people prefer to get there through the, uh, um, uh, the competition shooting. Uh, from, my, from my perspective, like I said, I haven't been in uh, a, 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 uh, two uh, gun fights. Uh, uh, to, to me, it, it's all valuable. The things I learned uh, on the range, the things I learned from quick drawing, all that comes into handy. Uh, all, all of what you're saying is valuable. Like, the, like the one brother said, who, who has the military experience, um, you know, you uh, uh, putting yourself in the best situation is, is very important. But on the other hand, like the competition brothers are saying, you don't always know uh, how this, or, uh, the situation is going to develop, and you got to be quick. Like I said, you know, um, so it's it's a it's a combination of all of it. Uh, it all comes down to. Uh, Reflexes, but like the one brother said, I, I'm not sure. I think his name was Chad. The one said he's taking himself off uh, camera. Like he said, you know, you want to have all the skills that you can that you that you can get because you don't know what you're gonna need when you get there. So I, I agree with that, and I think all you brothers are correct. I think the most important thing is to be open-minded and to, to be willing to learn from each other. So with that, you know, I I, I conclude my my statement. All right, brother. We appreciate your time, man. For you jumping on and, and doing your thing, uh, brother. Who we who who gonna go ahead, Jason? You haven't said anything to me. Go ahead and rock out, brother. I know you don't understand technology, so I'll give you a second to unmute yourself. Yeah, you still on mute, brother. You talking to me? Yeah. Okay. Um. I, I, I agree that you know we need a we need a healthy balance of both, without question. Uh, to be tactically sound and slow um, is beneficial at times. To be tactically sound and slow is not beneficial at times. So you know Jordan was making a point of saying it's about better tactics. Well, here's something that we that a lot of us have probably experienced on some levels, and just you know just being in our neighborhoods, um, or in this day and time with people being you know kind of irate. You're going into the grocery store. You're, going, you're pulling into the parking lot, and somebody gets upset because you get into a spot. You you know you have a calm mind and disposition, but that person hops out their car while you're trying to gather up your kids or your wife and kids. And that person comes over there cursing. You're naturally going to want to if you're if you have a sound mind, you're going to try to de-escalate the situation. But he's getting amped up, and you see the guy getting ready to reach in his waistband. You've got a car full of kids. Tell me where if you see that. He hasn't pulled a gun. His gun is not on you, but you see him reaching his waistband. You, you recognize that this man is upset and anything can happen. At this point in time, if you see that man start reaching for his waistband, if you are quicker at drawing your firearm than he is, that's when speed matters. So to negate that doesn't make sense. But again, to your point, there's going to be times where absolutely speed will be irrelevant. You will need to have better tactics. But to negate the fact that you do need to work on your speed, and as one of the other brothers pointed out, learning how to transition, if you're de dealing with two people in a room, it's great. I see a lot of people who can draw, draw a sub-second, but then they're, they're take their sub-second draw, but that changes at different distances and only partial or small parts of their body to hit. So to be able to swing on one target and transition to another one, that's a skill set. And again, Jordan, I, we, we all are employing you. Spend 20 bucks. It's, all, it's only 20 bucks. Spend 20 bucks to try one match. 10 seconds, brother. That's it. Try one match. All right. I appreciate you, brother. You already know how we get down. Uh, who was next that wanted to add anything else to the conversation? Go ahead, Quasi. All right. So this is my last one for because I think for me it's just about listen, we need to we need to change. Um, the mindset of, of who shoots competition. You know that the elites are actually shooting these competitions to get better. The only way we're going to win this, this uh, to win Jordan in is by getting him to, to see the light. I will give you $1,000, Jordan. $1,000. Everyone can hear it. I have the money. I'll give you $1,000. You have your first classification, not just your classification, average of your just to get classified uspsa i'll give you a thousand dollars you make master you classify as master that's what i am currently one thousand dollars jordan 
You still got a minute if you want it. Nah, take that. Because that, and then, but the, the deal is though, once you fucking figure out what your classification is and you understand that you have a fucking shit turn to learn, you need to turn and provide, you need to hit up Babu, hit up all those that are listening to you and get them to understand that they have to change the way that they're thinking and they have to get better at shooting. And there's no, I'm not digging to our tactics. It's both, both are needed, but I'm willing to give you a thousand dollars. You classify as M, you can have a thousand dollars. Right? No love. You don't owe me nothing if you don't. 20 seconds. You'll thank me later because you're going to open your own eye, but $1,000. Is that a deal? It's free. It's free money. All you got to do is register, pay $20, go classify, six, get your classification. Jordan, you would not give you a second if you want to if you want to just real quick say yes or no or I, I just I can just I don't really have much to say I could just say whatever it probably take me less than two minutes whatever that was um so it's probably gonna cost me more than one thousand dollars to do this like honestly so that's not really like a big come up first off wait uh, to why, go back to what Jason why was does saying? it take you a thousand hold up why does it take you more than a, what do you, it costs twenty dollars do they give me free ammo at the competition the mark, like, how I don't know. Does a can you classify as that in one competition? No, you. It's 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 a hundred, maybe one hundred fifty rounds a match, but twenty dollars in one hundred fifty rounds. I mean, how many matches? Six matches. It's an average. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was asking. You. Like, yeah. how many? How much do I have to shoot? How much do I have to pay to even do that? It's four for your initial classification. Oh, it's four. You you got four for your initial classification. Four matches. It's around one hundred fifty dollars. Right, 100, 150 mm -hmm. rounds, and you pay twenty dollars to 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 uh to the match, and then all you gotta do is shoot four master class um, classifiers, and you become a master, and then then you can say really that you and I are on the same page. All right, so the like I don't know if you started the timer for my two minutes yet, but um, no, you so like. Uh, the timer started. All right. So, I mean, I, that doesn't mean nothing to me at all. Really doesn't. Like, um, you might be able to do something better than me, but I might be able to do something better than you. That just seemed like a little bit like ego to me. But I'm not saying that I can't shoot, Master. I may be able to do that. I'm not sure. I haven't spent as much time in competition with you. I don't know what all goes into that. Right. But to go back to what Brother Bruce was saying, I agree with a lot, like what he was saying. Right. Where, we're all pretty much saying a lot of the same things, but we're taking different paths. So like, and I, and I don't even think we're taking different paths. I'm pretty sure, like we were saying earlier, even Chad agreed with me, that we're all like, you know, kind of like doing the same things and stuff. It's just your level of gravitation, right? I'm doing the same draws you guys are doing. I'm doing this. I, I don't know why you guys think I don't try to go to the range and shoot fast or try to draw fast or whatever you guys are saying, right? Or I can't shoot fast, right? But I'm just applying it in a different way. What brother Jason, I think it was Jason was saying with like, you know, the part with the waistband, you know, I already been in that situation. I have a letter from a teacher. I can give it to you guys if you want, where me and another officer a kid did draw his, try to at least draw his gun on his waistband from his waistband in a school that I was guarding faster than me. And I was faster than him. He surrendered. I don't know why you guys think I'm not like thinking that shooting fast is important because I do think that's important. I don't know why you guys think that I don't think drawing fast is not important because I do think that's important. I'm just taking the same skills like how we were saying earlier. Chad agree. It's the time you put into the competition that makes you better at the competition. All that blood, sweat, and tears you guys put into that competition to make you a master or whatever, right? I'm putting all that blood, sweat, and tears in too. I'm just applying it in a different fashion than you guys are. 10 seconds. Oh, that's it. I'm just applying it in a different way. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, brother. Brother Chad, you want to? I can't remember who has and who hasn't gone. Y'all going to have to help me out with yeah, that. I'm I, old. I, I'll go. Uh, I'll take up that uh, that $1,000 offer, bro. Straight up. Uh, I'll take that without hesitation. I mean, what the fuck you mean? I'll take that with no problem. Um, 
But I, I'll say it like this, and I don't know how many people I'm not gonna say look up to, but read some of the writings and research of Tom Givens. But according to Tom Givens, a lot of times the average self-defense situation is going to happen at three yards within um, three seconds and three to five rounds are fired. The person that's gonna win that gunfight is gonna be the person who's gonna be able to access their gun quickest and get shots on target quickest. Um, the, is there a transferable skill from competition to a self-defense situation in that context? Absolutely. Um, and that's not to say that that's the only way you can get that skill set, but it's a heck of a lot more inexpensive to do so uh, using uh, uh, competing as, as a pathway to build it, building and developing that skill set and quantifying what your skill set actually is. At the end of the day, I think that I was under the impression that the conversation was really about how do we move, you know, the, uh, 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 the bulk of black gun owners and, and, and black people forward relative to um, getting better at shooting because we are behind the eight ball or, or, or we're behind so much already. Um, my my one of my mentors, and if you don't have a mentor, if you're a mentor that doesn't have a mentor, you need you you need to get another mentor. Um, you need to get one. But I, one of my mentors, Ross Palmer, his motto is train, instruct, and compete, right? And take your training classes, teach other people, and then compete against other people as well. And it, 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 there's th this, this binary that is sometimes created doesn't have to be that way. Um, and I don't think that there was an instance that I heard Jordan say that there's an either or, but the fact that you didn't take that thousand dollars kind of puts you in a camp of, of there being an either or, uh, in my opinion, but that's just me listening uh, from the outside. I'll just say it like this. Um, if we want to get, it, 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 I, and I, I consider y'all pretty, you know, high level shooters. I'm a little man on the totem pole, honestly. Um, but one thing I do know well is people and how to motivate people and how to get people to do things that they wouldn't necessarily uh, do otherwise. And I think that if we want to make this attractive to a broad base of folks, it, it is gonna have to be meeting people where they at and then bringing them to where we are after we meet them where, where they're at, right? So look, I mean, you could talk to somebody, give them you know, some simple drills or whatever to work on that don't require time. And then we can start introducing timers. And then we can start introducing additional high, you know, additional levels of training. And then we can start introducing the comp the competitive stuff, right? Yes, and, yeah. And and all I'm saying really is is it might be a um, a slow roll, right? It's a harder path. Um, but I think it's necessary that we uh, uh, build upon this discussion and this conversation in a way that's going to make sense to get the majority of people. Uh, more engaged. That's all I got. Thank you. I appreciate you, brother. Who hasn't gotten there two minutes? Because I can't keep up and um, it's late. All right, brother. Go ahead, go ahead and do your thing, man. Floor is yours. All right. So first, I want to I want to thank everybody for coming out. Um, a lot of you guys, uh, oh, all of you actually, are very impressive, and I appreciate you guys sharing uh, your wisdom and knowledge and experiences. Uh, quasi. Accept my Facebook message or my Facebook request. I'm, um, a, I'm suspended, but I will. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, Jordan, I appreciate you training. That is head and shoulders above a lot of people. I don't think anyone here is discounting your ability or what you have done thus far. Um, it's great. And, and, you know, you are well educated. You you do know what you're talking about, and in, in, in a lot of the stuff that we're talking about. However, what we are trying to get, and this actually rings true to me because I actually went home from basic and fucking buried my cousin, the, my my favorite cousin. There's not even no no if ands or buts about it. From gun violence and from dealing with a lot of this stuff. So we have the same background. I'm from Richmond, Virginia. I grew up in that bitch when it was the 90s and it was the murder capital of the country. So a lot of this stuff that you are saying resonates with me. Bullet holes in the house resonates with me. And this is why we are so adamant about you getting out and doing these things because the training does improve your overall toolkit. And you can, I mean, so when I came out of 
the military and I shot my first competition, I tra treated it like it was a range day. I moved like I was on the range. I conducted myself like I was on a range. I was just out there engaging targets from a military aspect. You can go and do that. You don't have to learn the bad habits, but you will see that the timer, the pressures, it is valuable reps and valuable training. I understand, you know, you do a lot of training with these groups and with stuff like this, but when you are trying to merge those two together and you see guys that are really, really fast, That's you then can be deliberate. And, and pick up the things that are good and leave the things that are not. If that's in your mind, how you, how you set up your, your training. Like I was saying online, um, be deliberate in your training. I go back and I do tactical stuff after doing race stuff, and it's no problem still engaging those tactical maneuvers. And, those, and it's, I don't mistakenly jump out when I'm, when I'm focused on being tactical and when, when the situation calls for it. So I would implore you, get into the competition space because it is important. You being the best shooter you can be is important to me because you are in a situation where it matters. That's all I want. Like I said, I'm impressed by you, brother. I just want to see you be the best shooter. And I want to see everyone here grow as a community and grow as shooters. I appreciate you, brother. Is there anyone that hasn't had an opportunity to speak for the two minutes? You sent me a friend request, but what's the name? I'm sorry. because Peter Palomino is mine. Peter Palomino. Peter, Skeeter Palomino. Has everybody oh. had the opportunity to get their two minutes? If you haven't, just let me know. I'll make sure I'm not missing anybody. Hey, Jordan, I'm just want to, um, man, I want you to, I want to encourage you to operate in your why, man. No matter what happens, whatever your why is, do it, bro. Like, we, we, we don't know what's best for you, right? We may know, we may know what we think works best, but whatever works best for you, bro, rock it out, man. Do it hard. Be open to advice, but always operate in your why and be comfortable in your why. All right. So um, I appreciate y'all for coming out. I'm going to do my quick two minutes. Um, I'm going to start the timer now. So I ain't going to so y'all can't say that. Um, first, I want to say I appreciate you, Jordan. And this isn't about you per se. It, my reason for the conversation was to talk about the community in general, our people, right? You just happen to be willing to come on. You were available. So we're talking to you because there wasn't anyone else that shared your viewpoint that was able to come on, right? So this is not about you per se. It's not us versus Jordan. I, I want to make that clear. It's not, you're not the enemy. We have no issue with you. You know what I mean? I want to make sure all that is clear. Um, a couple of things that you mentioned about competition shooting and, and habits. And yes, habits are a thing, but would you agree that a person shooting competition will be better off than a person that does absolutely nothing? because the people on this panel don't represent the average gun owner at all. All of us practice, all of us take classes. We do the things that the average gun owner does not do. So if you can get the average gun owner to just get into something that is fun, that's gonna help them be a better shooter, that in my opinion is infinitely better than them doing nothing, right? Um, the other thing is as far as bad habits, I don't think, I don't think that'll happen as much as you think because even in, paintball. I've played paintball. Quasi and I have played airsoft one-on-one. -on -one. Not at one moment when he was shooting at me did I feel like I wanted to jump out from behind my cover. And that's just an airsoft. That's not, you know what I mean? That's not me worried about dying, but I had enough, enough quote-unquote fear about getting hit with the airsoft pellet that I didn't want to do anything stupid, right? So I don't, I think you might be overstating the idea that you could, just because you reload in the open, you're going to do that in a real life situation. So I, for real, look, if you find a match in your area, I'll pay for your, I'll pay for your entrance fee. I, I'll, I'll send you $20 for your fee. You probably, you go to the range anyway. So that's your range day. That's your range day. I'll pay your entry fee just so you can experience it one time. And if you don't like it, I respect that a thousand percent, but it's hard to kind of say, have a really hard stance against something if you haven't tried that. That's my only thing. But um, but again, I appreciate y'all. We've been on this, I don't even know what time it is. We've been on this joint for two hours. And I know y'all have lives. The brother has a baby right there. We got families and the whole nine. So man, I, I appreciate y'all so much for coming on and just imparting y'all wisdom. All y'all have valuable viewpoints. Everybody, that's including you, Jordan. I don't want to make you feel left out. Um, valuable viewpoints from either side, man. But uh, 
hopefully we can just push this thing forward, man, and, and, and kind of dispel some of the myths that are out there um, about what it is and what it isn't to be a competition shooter, man. But with that said, man, I love y'all. Be safe. Go forward in peace and love. And, uh, you know, we're going to cross paths soon. I see all of y'all on social media, you know, Quasi, you know what I mean? You my wingman, brother, so you already know we're going to be linking up. But um, y'all be safe out there, man. Thanks again for coming through 1,000%. And if you want a copy of this, man, let me know, and I'll make it available to you. All right. All right. Hey, y'all have a good one. Have a good night. Thank you, guys. All right. Thanks.